one. All right, two pedals, two pedals. Now on the Duke by the River guest line, I have been waiting to talk to one of these guys. I have Lucho from Vice City here to preview the Inter Miami match. Lucho, what is going on, brother? Thank you for hopping on Duke by the River. What's going on? What's going on, my bro? Everything all right? And another uh, beautifully gloomy day in uh, sunny South, uh, South Florida. Oh, um, what's what's the weather like over there these days? Um, it is um. It is a perfect mirror image of my insights, uh, how I feel after last night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah. uh, obviously, when you think of Miami, you think of nice sun and great weather. Here we've gotten a little chilly. We've got, we're getting in the fall. It's starting to get into the 60s, dipping a little bit. So uh, in a, about a couple months, I'm going to be hitting you up. Be like, yo, can I come down to Miami? It's a little cold. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Trust me. Trust me. You have a, you have a spot here with us. Um, we have Mama. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Well, Lucho, well, look, we're here to talk about Inter Miami and the Philadelphia Union. We're playing on Sunday. Um, I've been really looking forward to talking to you because you are part of a supporters group that I am really jealous of. Now, listen, guys, I am a proud Sons of Ben member, and I'm an SOB until I die. But these guys are doing something special, bringing something different to the MLS table, and I'm really excited to talk about it. But first off, Lucho, what I wanted to ask you was, um, look, you've waited – you guys, all in Miami, waited so long for this franchise. What has it been like thus far? We're in September now, in year one of a, the first year of a crazy year overall in sports. Uh, but kind of wanted to know, what's it been like having it through Miami finally? Um, it's it's been a long road, man. Um, as you said, I, I am part of Vice City 1896. The 1896 being the year that Miami was incorporated as a city, so we are very much 305 till I die. Um, with that being said. We have a part of our, our core members were, were founders of the Afusionados when Miami Fusion Ooh. was playing back in the day. So it, it, this is nothing, you know, this is nothing new to them. This is something that they've, they've been doing from, for 19 plus, 20 plus years. Um, and that's how long they've been waiting as well. We've got some people waiting 19, 20 years to see MLS back in their city. They tried um, the blue and yellow for the black and pink. For the black and pink, for the rossi negro, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, it's crazy because it, it's it's funny when uh, I think one of the first couple of Vice City events that I would come out to, I would see um, one of our members, Luis Felipe. He would come and don his uh, his uh, his fusion jersey. That is sick. I'm like that that that's badass, you know. You know, that's, that's pretty that's, sick. That's part of history, dude. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, having Inter Miami finally, dude. Uh, it, it's it, they're, they're, honestly, you you can see it from the videos where that we post of how how happy we get and how 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 much passion we have, um, and a lot of people like to to brag on us uh, or on Miami sports fans that uh, I mean we, we do have a little bit of a reputation for being a, a bit of bandwagoners, <laughs> um, but when you get told hey your team is getting an MLS uh, team again right you you're going to start supporting a team from its inception. Um, you know, we, we had to get on that. We had to get on that immediately. Um, and it, what, what Vice City basically started as was a couple of friends who would get together every Saturday, uh, bring their kids to play soccer, you know, uh, do an asadito, a little yes. bit of barbecue, drink some beers, hang out. And slowly but, but surely, you know, this, this idea of, you know, like, Let's get this a little bit more organized. Let's get some more people. Let's get some people that are crazy about football. Let's get people who want to play drums, who want to wave flags, who want to do what we now don as locura full time for 90 minutes. Um, and yeah, man, we, we couldn't be happier. We couldn't be happier. We, I, you know, I, I, it's crazy how my whole family has changed after meeting Inner Miami and, and meeting Vice City, where we almost wear. Uh, black and pink almost every day and we don't even notice it like, i can't tell you how many pink shoes i bought in the last two years that i've never owned in my 27 years of life so um yeah man it, it's 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 insane um it's a, a unique opportunity you know to to be there from the inception and i, I look, look it's crazy because um I'm I'm the same way. I didn't expect an MLS franchise to take over my life the way it has. 
ever since the Eagles won the Super Bowl, it's been Union, 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 Union my whole life. And I, 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 I can connect with you. I know I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a lot of blue and gold in my closet these days. Yeah, too. I still need to find some gold shoes. I haven't found some dope gold sneakers, but we're, we're going to get there. We're definitely going to get there. They're no, around I, there somewhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Lucho, what I love so much about Vice City and why I want them, want Sons of Ben to implement what you guys are doing is the Spanish speaking chance you guys got like yeah, man. one of the issues we've had here in Phil in Philly with the union is we have a we ha- we don't have like this the big population of Latinos like Miami does but we have a solid Latino population and we still have had a difficulty trying to bu- let allow them to buy in on the union and come down and I want to you know be hanging with my Latino brothers and sisters and chanting, you know, uh, hey, vamos, vamos, la, in different, like, Spanish-speaking uh, chants, like the, like the barras in South America that they do. Um, kind of, like, just talk about that, and where did that even come from? Well, I mean, you, you just said it, bro. In, in Miami, you have this huge melting pot of Latinos from all over, from Central America, Southern America, from, and, you know, from, from, from their home. And where they're used to supporting their team back at home, now they found a new home in Miami. Um, they they wanted to bring that 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 part of home here, right? Um, I think the 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 best way one of our one of our main uh, music creators, his name is Walter. He's my uh, my other half of of the the band leadership. Cool. He is um he is a San Lorenzo fan, so un cuero. Uh-huh. And, uh, um, you know, they, they have arguably one of these, like, not one, but many uh, amazing songs, uh, Barra songs. Um, yeah, man, it, we, we just wanted to be ourselves, you know. Um, like I was telling you earlier, we, we're, we're um, unapologetically ourselves. We are super, super proud of being Latino. And we have to. And we, we have to, but we can't let that, we, we can't let that go. Um you know, we, we have gotten some pushback as far as, you know, not, not singing in English and stuff like that, but it's, it's just the not wanting to have recycled um, English chants like the rest of the league has a lot of like, you know, American outlaws chants that you hear everywhere. Or um, even like those Eng- those British chants that you keep hearing. Right. Or even British chants. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you get that European side. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's something that we didn't want to do. Uh, we, we wanted to, to show, um, with the, the rest of the league, we kind of wanted to, you know, revolutionize what it is to be a barra in the MLS. And, um, yeah, man, that's what we're doing. We're just, we're, we're being ourselves. We're singing in our, our native tongue and, um, we're not afraid to do it. Oh my God. That gives me goosebumps. I love hearing that type of stuff. I love it. Latino and proud. That's great to hear. Absolutely. About it. That's awesome to hear. All right. Well, uh, Lucha, listen. Um, so obviously we're going to play you guys on Sunday. I kind of wanted to dive into this, uh, roster here that you guys got. Um, and of course we can't, you know, not talk about Inter Miami without talking about this Gonzalo Higuain sign that you guys made. Now you guys know me very well. I'm a, uh, I'm a Napoli fan. It, obviously the Union are my number one in my life, but I, I still keep an eye on my Napoli. And I remember when Gonzalo Higuain was part of Napoli and my man was scoring some freaking goals. And I think that in MLS, this guy can – he can very well break the goal-scoring record in a single season. Obviously, we're going to have to wait till next year to see that. But yeah. I was even looking at the potential lineup you guys can put with Iguain. Bro, that's a playoff lineup. That's definitely it's a, it's a playoff. It's a playoff lineup, absolutely. I, I know uh, we could probably get there a little bit quicker than uh, than Orlando has, uh, <laughs> especially with Pipita now. Um, <laughs> trust me, uh, speaking for the rest of us down here, we're – Hell excited for BB Oh, absolutely. Um, we're we're just we're 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 desperate for you know his. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think what we're waiting on, or rather, what they're waiting on, is uh, finalizing his visa. I think. Um, um I, I'm not entirely sure. I need to read up on that, but yeah, he should be able. But, he should be able to get it. But yeah, trust me, we're bro. we're we're all desperate for him to start. Uh, especially that's what you guys need i think you guys have a good squad you just need a number nine that knows how to make those runs we've been we've been saying it since i think game three i think since the mls's back tournament where we're 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 desperately in need of a nine and Mm -hmm. you know now we have a a hell of a nine you know internationally known um and we're excited bro we're we're hell excited for him to start Oh my, yeah, and, and the, 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 uh, Matuidi signing as well. You're trying to get all the old Juve players over there, man. (laughs) 
Yeah, for, it's so funny that, that you say that, man, because now, like, reading all the comments on Twitter or Facebook, um, I, I get a sense that Juve fans don't like uh, Sami Khedira because um, uh, they, they keep saying, yo, you took Matuidi, you took Gonzalo, take Khedira too. <laughs> I don't know. Khedira is just a little too slow now, and that's I think that's why they don't like him over Absolutely, in Juve. Absolutely, yeah. He's yeah. definitely lost like, a lot of steps for sure. So I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe in the MLS he could be a center back, but people keep like underestimating the MLS quality. It's getting faster. It's getting more physical. It's not It's not the MLS of 2010 anymore, guys, no, for sure. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Yeah, they're not. they're picking up the pace. I mean, we're, we are still a very, you know, very young league, but we're getting there, man. Oh, for we're sure. There. We, we definitely need a, a little bit better recognition. And I think with, you know, like these moves, like, you know, Pipita coming over, well, you know, uh, Iguain coming over and being able to connect with, you know, also our American players and our, our academy players, yeah. our younger players to, you know, to get them up to speed. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I think it's going to revolutionize or not, maybe not revolutionize, but change the mindset of what people think of MLS. Hopefully. Oh, wow. That's that's my hope. That's for sure my hope. All right. So Miami this year, it's been it's been interesting. I mean, obviously, you guys before the season had so much hype. David Beckham as your owner is gonna it's gonna bring hype for sure. Um, and then I, I love the Pizzato signing with Alonso as your as your manager. And it didn't start the way you guys probably wanted it to. And then, you know, it, it, after Orlando and the MLS is back tournament, you guys have turned it up and you look solid. Other than last night, which we'll talk about in a second, but kind of talk about, you know, the performance of Miami in 2020 thus far. Um, I think, I mean, yeah, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, definitely crazy hype. Uh, I, I think that's honestly with anything in Miami, uh, not only uh, not only in Miami, but when you talk about anything sports or, or anything in Miami, everything kind of gets a little bit maybe overhyped. Um, sometimes they do meet expectations. Sometimes they do not. Um the our our first two games, uh, LAFC, uh, DC United. I think they were solid games. We obviously yeah. didn't get the result, but to go against um, you know a strong LAFC, uh, you know the previous year, I think they were they ended up you know top, top of the league or, exactly supporter so shield to to go into that and only come out one nil. You know we were very proud of that. And that was um, a beautiful goal by Vela too. You can't you can't yeah. front on that. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I I tweeted the team and I'm like. Ro I tweeted Robles actually, and I'm like, look out for Velez's left foot, bro, because it's coming. <laughs> He's gonna and, whip uh, it, and he he did it. So you the know, best part about that match was after I don't know if you were there, but there's a bunch of Miami fans and uh, or no, there's a bunch of LAFC fans enchanting at at Beckham, um, because because obviously you know Beckham was Galaxy star, so yeah. They were chanting. It was it was pretty funny the whole trying to get in Beckham's head, but it was it was definitely definitely uh, it, it was a good first performance by Miami for sure. Uh, and then we you know fast forward to uh, DC United, we get our first goal in a, in a club history with Pizarro, um, and I think that's where we started getting excited just because now you see you see Morgan getting into play where now you know obviously now he's uh, he's at two goals himself. Um, nice. Huge game uh, that was uh, with um, that was our Orlando game. I think. Well, I don't know. It's too much beer, but <laughs> we we drink too much beer down here, and uh, we we tend to forget a lot. Typical um, soccer fans. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Typical <laughs> soccer fans. Um, and yeah, so our our first two games, we 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 saw them really solid. Obviously, we saw them. You know, you you have an expansion team. You still need to wait for this team to get their chemistry together, to get more you know familiar with each other. Um, we have Diego Alonso, who, you know, won, you know, the, the CONCACAF Champions League twice, you know, with oh two my different God, teams. Yeah. So you, you, you have this mentality where, okay, cool, we're, we're going to get our, our stuff together, maybe not right now, but definitely down the line. Um, so that, those first two games happened 48 hours before our first ever home inaugural match. The league decides, hey, we're, you know, suspending the league for coronavirus and stuff. Oh man. And uh, trust me, that I think that hurt more than, than anything, especially for our people who've been waiting 19, 20 years. Um, but we're like, you know what? We've waited that long. We can wait a little bit longer. Um, and then, yeah, MLS is back tournament, not um, not a, not what we were expecting. You know, I don't think anybody was expecting to Orlando to learn how to play oh, soccer overnight. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how our first year in the league, 
um, has become th- their best, <laughs> their you know time. In you know, the- you know, you want to know why, right? It's our boy Pareja. He he's done a fantastic job of getting, yeah, I mean, getting them all, man. I don't. I'm not gonna get. I, <laughs> We're not gonna talk positive about. I will never. I, I will never talk positive about him. <laughs> I'm the same way with the Red Bull. <laughs> well, um, yeah, man. No, Lucha. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Red Bull match. I, what happened, bro? What like what? what so happened? four to one. Uh, I mean, uh. We're no longer undefeated at home, so we can't talk about that anymore. <laughs> um, we, we were expecting a huge match from Robles, especially since he basically yeah. made his career with Red Bulls. Um, and, you know, coming straight off from them, if I'm not mistaken, he was then, uh, with them for six or eight years, one yeah. or two. Um, for a while. So we were expecting a huge match from him and to concede four goals. Uh, that's that's not a you know that's not a way to say hey thanks for the memories I think um, <laughs> uh, yeah dude there were so many missed opportunities Morgan could have scored um, Pizarro could have scored uh, LGP could have scored with that header that went sure. like Cedefio like crazy um, and then I think the biggest one which hurts me the most just because I I has so, I ha- I have I it, it hasn't faltered it faltered maybe a little bit. But I have so much faith in Robbie Robinson. Um, he, you know, young kid from Clemson. Uh, we we were looking forward to him, and he kind of just choked. And his, you know, kind of maybe first opportunity to really score by himself. Um, you get a, a beautiful pass, if I'm not mistaken, from from uh, from Pellegrini or from, from somewhere in the center, and it goes directly to Robinson, and he just freezes. And instead of passing it to you know to 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 the middle, he just I don't know. Dude, and uh, I think that's honestly it's it's a it's an ongoing topic and it's a, a miss opportunities. Um, we're looking at Pizarro, who, other than you know his goal against DC United, hasn't really there's you know there's not that spark. I don't know, and you know there was a lot of people saying, oh, he's missing a midfielder. We bring a, a, a world class midfielder fielder a fielder in, and still kind of nothing. Um, I'm just, I'm still hoping that this team is still finding their rhythm and, you know, their, their chemistry. Yeah. It's, it's a, a expansion pains, man. And, you know, um, it, it also sucks to be the, the first expansion to go 0-6. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, we're hoping for the best, man. Um, honestly, the, 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 the supporters are, are, you know, we'll, we'll be with them till, till the end. I gotta be, man. Uh, we're, we're hoping for the best, dude. So. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you, as, as, a, as a union fan, we went through 10 years of bad soccer. So right. have, have some faith, guys. It's, exactly. It, it That's all better. it is, man. It's, it's having some faith. It's, it is getting better where, you know, you, you get excited with these huge signings, like, you know, like, like Gonzalo Higuain. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there, man. Trust me, we, we, the faith has not been lost. No, absolutely. You cannot lose the faith there, for sure. All right. Well, uh, Lucho, so Sunday against the Philadelphia you're going to travel up here to Philly to take a little trip to Chester. How are you feeling about it? Uh, your Inter Miami against us? Um, against number two in the East. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I, I'm excited to see the game. Honestly, uh, I, I, you know, I saw, uh, Philly's last game, uh, not the Cincy game, but the one before you guys did Montreal. Uh, yeah. Right. right Mont- you guys that was spent- weird. Yeah, really in weird. In Red but, Bull Arena. <laughs> yeah, really weird. But you spanked, you know, uh, well, Montreal, you know, the, the Henri's uh, Montreal. He's having a tough um, time, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm a fan of Bedoya. I know he, you know. Yes, old sir. Boy, you know, men's national team. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, I, I'm I'm leaving my expectations really low. I'll tell you that much. Oh, man. Just, I'm just leaving it low. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope for the best, but, you know, prepare for the worst. Just because I was expecting a, a pretty awesome game last night, okay. and it, it obviously did not turn out that way. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing with me. Now, when we played you guys in Orlando, I thought you guys showed up. I did not expect you guys to match our physicality. You guys matched it very well. Um, that Reyes center back you guys got, he he's a bull. He's a bull for sure. He he's definitely a bull, bro. He does not. He does. He he's he not scared. He doesn't take. He's not scared. He doesn't take hates hits lightly. He you know, and he's him, there. He's there to the end. Him with LGP, Poppy. That bro. That's that's yeah, that's man. a that's a tough center back we, pair. We, we have we have a solid uh, a solid back line to be honest. We have LGP Reyes. Sweat. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
I don't know, man. Ben Sweat has been kind of um, – it. he comes in in certain times for sure, but I think it's been a little bit more lackluster okay. uh, than anything. Um, and you can ask anybody uh, um, from Miami. Ben Sweat's not definitely not our favorite. Well, um, we have bad memories of Ben Sweat. Every time we played at NYCFC and he was on that pitch with NYC – he always got away with some ridiculous fouls, and it always used to drive us crazy. <laughs> He's got that bully face. Yeah. He <laughs> kind of reminds me of a Sid from Toy Story type thing. So, I mean, I, I think it's it's good to have that on our team, you know, to have some type of a of a, somebody, you know, that you, you know, some, some Philly fans are afraid of. So, you know, to see him play against, against you guys again, you know, we have some um, – it, it, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to, to watch, man. I think it's going to be an interesting game, um, both where we definitely need to show up and and just make sure that you guys don't score. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, so the thing is, the way we don't score is you guys cannot make mistakes. That's I think that's how we killed you in that first one. I think that, like, one goal, it was right off a, a corner kick from you guys, and then we just turned it up. Jamiro ran down the field with Brendan Aronson, and they found Casper. And I, that's really been our bread and butter. If teams like FC Cincinnati, I think did a great too. That's why they that that's why they they've gotten so many draws, especially Wednesday against yesterday against us. Um, you know they sat back, uh, allowed us to do try to at least you know gain some some attack, create some attack on them, and and, and it, since he does a great job of just sitting back, so. I mean, I think you guys just need to match the physicality and take a page out of that book, and we'll we'll see what happens. But what do you what do you what do you think? What do you uh, what do you see that Miami needs to do to get this at least some sort of point? Yeah, I mean, physicality is definitely something that I've that I've talked to my friends about. Where you 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 see, like for example, I, one of my one of my biggest um, I don't want to say headaches, but I, I, for lack of a better word, um, Pellegrini man, or one one of our DPS. 19 year old kid breck shea runs more than this kid does really breck shea, breck shea has a little bit more physicality than this kid does and he's twice his height and you you know i mean like for example let's take leo messi leo messi is short but runs like hell and is super fast i feel like i'm not comparing pellegrini to messi but pellegrini as a young kid should have some more physicality and i think yeah i mean i, I can agree on you on that point where our team can do a little bit better physically um, you know, be, being able to 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 keep up their stamina a little bit more and not not feel so gassed out on on the second half. We usually come in strong in the first half. If if I'm not uh, if you check, most of our goals have been in the first half, and then yeah. we don't do anything in the second half. In the second half, we're just trying to survive and not trying to concede any more goals. So if we can play in a full ninety minutes, then that's all it is, man. If if and, and especially, I know it's hard down here in South Florida, because in South Florida, you have crazy humidity. Um, I applaud all the teams that came to the MLS's back tournament because I'm sure that wasn't easy. You can see everybody dripping sweat every single game, whether it was in the morning, which God rest their souls. I, 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 I'm I know. Bless their soul, sorry. Playing at nine in the morning or eight in the morning in South Florida sun is not fun. Doing anything in the South Florida sun at eight in the morning is not fun. Walking to your car is not fun. So uh, <laughs> playing a whole 90 minutes of, of, um, of football must have been gruesome. Um, but I also think we should take that into consideration as being an advantage. You have maybe a lot of teams like, you know, for your, like, uh, like, like Union, for example, where you guys are more northern. Maybe you don't get so much um, that, that much humidity or humidity yeah, at all. Yeah. I think it's definitely a advantage. Um, now, that being said, us going up to Philly, to you know, some colder weather. I don't know how many of our players are are um, are acclimated, or well, maybe not acclimated, but maybe used to mm-hmm. some colder weather. Um, so yeah, well, well, hopefully that we doesn't should, that doesn't you know. Take, yeah, we should be so okay. Much. So the lowest it's gotten in the past week, I think it's been like high fifties. So I'm okay. expecting on Sunday we'll have like a sixty to seventy. It's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful at night. It's gonna be uh, you'll you'll probably we'll probably get the sunset still yeah. um falling with our bridge. Like you'll see it on TV. It's gonna look really nice. Be really do get, beautiful. Do you guys get any chill because of the river? Like any any type of breeze and stuff? Um yeah. So like in the beginning of the year, usually when our season starts like in March or end of February, it's it's a bitch to go down to to, yeah, to the stadium imagine. and watch those games. My first game as El Parcero Philly. 
I went with my sombrero. I went with, I just went in a hoodie and an Under Armour under. I froze my butt off that game. And I was like, okay, next time I want to wear uni gear, but I think we should bring a winter coat because this yeah. is a little, little cold. Uh, but after that, you know, that's why I love our season time and I don't want to change this, the, the MLS season structure. I like playing in the summer because number one, you know, there's only one sport going on and that's yeah. baseball. Not really, not a lot of people like baseball anymore. Um, and number two, I love the, I, I want to be in the hot, you know, I want to watch soccer while it's hot. I don't want to watch it while it's cold. So I think that's why I love it, you know, playing it in the summer for sure. Absolutely. It matches, uh, it matches the, 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 the passion and, you know, the, the emotion of the sport, you know, exactly. I, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. picture anybody in, in, you know, winter coats going crazy. I, I mean, nah. you, you'll see it. You'll definitely see it, but I don't see people, you know, you, when, when you think maybe when you think Barra. And and going crazy, you picture people with their shirts off and stuff. If, <laughs> if you take off your shirt off in like anything under fifty to 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 South Floridians, you're weird. Um, <laughs> so yeah, man. It, I mean anything anything under uh, seventy, and people are busting out, you know, their their Uggs and their and their winter stuff out down here. So imagine anything lower than that. It's it's um yeah we 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 can't think about it. Absolutely. All right, let's let's hear it, Lucho. Let me let me get that prediction from you. What's going to happen on Sunday night? I I am hoping for what we've kind of done in the uh, other than the Red Bulls game. Um, we've we've kept it pretty solid at being no more than like like a two one you know score. So I, I'm I'm hoping for for two one Miami winning. But um, if you know if 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 Philly pulls up the leg, they, they might be ending up on the, on the 2 1 side of that. Well, one thing that should work in your favor, you won't be able to see Alejandro Bedoya. He got the yellow card, so that should. Uh, but we do have uh, one of our homegrowns, Anthony Fontana, who has been turning it up. Nice. He's had, like, uh, I think, was it four goals in the past uh, four games or something like that? Um, he's definitely turning up, so that's going to be uh, something to look out for. But uh, I, I agree. I think that. Uh, I, don't, I think it'll be. I think it'll start off a little slow, um, and then I, I, I just think the union are gonna pull away. But uh, it should be. It should be an interesting one. And you know, obviously, I, I can't wait to play Miami. This is a team that I've been looking forward to seeing as well for a long time. I know. I know a lot. Of Miami is a Latino hotbed, so finally getting to see Inter Miami. I wish you guys could come up here. I wish we could all be down in the stadium. Um, but uh, hopefully next year we can all be in the, in the stadiums. And uh, we can enjoy some soccer live and in person for sure. Uh, before, before we sign off, Lucho, um, it's it's Latino Heritage Month. Um, it, this is very important to me. It's very important for a lot of people. Kind of wanted to give you because I can clearly tell you are a proud Latino, and I absolutely love that about you. Just kind of briefly tell people the importance of this month and the importance of being Latino to you in America. Um, we have we have a lot of people, especially in Miami, where their parents and maybe their grandparents or maybe even before that fought and sacrificed so much to give us uh, a better life, you know, and exactly you, you have a lot of immigrants that come, you know, over to Miami or to the United States anywhere. And, you know, they try to um, they try to, hey, look, you know, let, let's let's live, you know, the American dream and let's try to and, and, and do this. But then at the same time, some families do let go of that lot inside just to, I guess, not feel um, left out from the rest of American culture or whatever it is. But it, I, at least I can speak for Miami where Miami is, is not that type of city. Miami is, is, I said it earlier, so unapologetically Latino. Um, <laughs> I, I like, one, one, of the be- one of the best and maybe worst examples is I speak Spanish to every single person in here, in, in Miami. Um, my, my wife hates it. She's like, how do you know? Or why are you assuming? But it's just something that we do. And I think Spanglish is the unofficial official language of Miami. <laughs> just because we, we, we throw some crazy words and, you know, you're, you're speaking in, uh, just, uh, English and I don't know where it just comes out. Spanish goes right back into English. Um, I, I think it's insanely important to keep that culture and to be so proud of your culture. My, my kid is, it, it was born here in Miami, but he he he's three years old and already knows two languages speaks spanish and understands spanish speaks english understands english and i i think maybe just by by that starting point and um, just to show you how proud of, of a latino i am where i'm showing my kid 
to continue, you know, on that that culture and not. Um, cause I, I honestly, that's that's one of the things that not bothers me, but but maybe bothers me a little bit is when you have a Latino person who doesn't have the f or hasn't um, had the effort to try and learn their you know their father's or their mother's um, home language, you know. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing, but it's it's an opportunity, you know. Uh, for example, I, I work in in, uh, in phone sales. I used to have this coworker who didn't speak a lick of Spanish, and when those customers would walk in, he would send them to me. So now I'm making all that extra, you know, commission off your customers that you can't take care of. Um, so yeah, man. If to all my Latinos, you know, listening to to the to the pod, um, be unapologetically Latino until the day you die. Um, Absolutely. You know, blast, blast that, you know, Joe Arroyo and Hector Lavo. Yes. You know, like, Hell like, yes. Level 10, um, you know, cl- well, you know, clean your entire house at in the morning. <laughs> 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 Blasting some Mark Anthony or whatever. Um, and, and they'll be sorry about it. I, I love it. I love it. And you know, I, I, I'm so happy you said that. So last year I started going to Eagles tailgates as a Cuarcero Philly. I would wear my sombrero on. And a lot when you go to an Eagles tailgate, let's be let's be honest, Philly. It's predominantly a bunch of white people, and nothing wrong with it. I love my white people, but um, I would get a lot of crazy looks. And I went to a da- the Dallas Cowboys tailgate, and I, and I don't know if you know Lucho. This is a big deal here in Philly. Dallas and Philly, it's it's, it's serious business. So people w- would ask me, "Why are you wearing a Cowboys hat for the Cowboys game?" And I would and. and I, I, most people get upset. Me, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity to educate my fellow Philadelphian and tell them I'm a proud. I am a Philadelphian, but I am also proud to be Colombian. And I wear this because I want to show you guys that not all Philly fans are Italian or Irish or Black. Yeah. We are also Colombian. We're Puerto Rican. We're Mexican. We're even Chinese. We're even Korean. And that's that's the point of it. Like America is growing every. Every day, we're getting more cultures from different places. And like you said, it's important to be unapologetic about your culture, not just being Latino. But, of course, this is our month, and I'm so glad that you said the words you said. And uh, happy Latino Heritage Month. And everyone out there, celebrate it the way you want to. Don't let anyone tell you how to celebrate your month. And uh, thank you so much, Lucho, thank you so much for hopping on, man. Any last words for our guests? No, yeah, man. Um, uh, John, I, I thank you so much, you know, for for inviting me, man. I, I got very excited when uh, when you reached out. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to do it maybe sometime again, you know, and maybe next yes. year we'll play again, dude. Um, I know a couple of my friends who would love to to get on the show as well. Maybe speak Hell a little yeah. bit more, more, yeah. more sports uh, eloquently uh, than me. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, uh, final words. I think I just want to reiterate on what I said: be be unapologetically yourself. Um, yes, sir. You know, when it comes to your culture, when it comes to, uh, you know, being a, a, the person that you are, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't hide behind uh, facades and don't, don't try to be something that you're not, you know? Um, yeah, that, those, those, have, those would have to be my last words. Awesome, man. Lucho, thank you so much for coming on. Lucho from Vice City, ladies and gentlemen, you, you heard it here first.